Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. <laughs> it's Monday, I don't know. But <laughs> don't see the, the, the Christians came out with the first widespread civil disobedience in response to coronaphobia lockdowns in america you know like good good for them and there was a big part of the crowd today that was christian as well they said a prayer they said the pledge of allegiance and you know there there, there was a uh, there, there was a a bit of a sermon uh from from somebody whose business had been shut i don't want to call it that but there, there was definitely some pr you know christian proselytizing i don't have a problem with yeah, that. I was gonna, so where are you where are you on religion where where are you where are you on religion, Adam, while we're on that subject? Just real quick. Any, I, I, anything that helps people live better. That, okay. that answer, you know, religion, but what about you? What about you personally? Do you talk about that? Okay. I, I do in, in my own way. I'm, I'm, I, the, the words that would best label me would be, you know, Buddhist, pantheist, Wiccan. You know, there's something okay. in that. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Um, okay. but, but no, to me, pantheism is the core of, of my belief system that that God is pervasive in the universe. God is okay. everything. God is everywhere. Okay. And, right. and, and that religion is, is humanity's attempt to answer the questions that we can't answer from science and observation and reason. Mm -hmm. And anybody who embraces a story or, or a worldview or a religious mythology, whatever it is, that helps them live better or understand the world better, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. Okay, that's cool. No, I, I could I could rock with that. I know I believe, like, um, so I'm not like, I don't know, it's difficult. I believe in God, but what I believe is if you could actually go outside of the universe and look back, that's when you would see God. I believe God's everything that exists yeah. in the universe. So that's can. my personal. Yeah. That, yeah. Huh? Uh, yeah. That, no, that's, very, that's very much in line with mine. Very, okay. very, I mean, the same at least the same concept of God, yeah. you know, and, and I think that's, that's, uh, it's, it's really important that it, in the, you know, the, the spirituality though, that we, that we accept mm -hmm. it is, it is, it is in a sense, we are telling ourselves a story of, of things that we do not know. We are, we are choosing to embrace things as a matter of faith. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I've gone through a lot of different phases. I was raised you know, very vaguely Jewish and very vaguely Presbyterian and, you know, not strict with either, but, but certain, you know, I've gone through my phases of like, I got to figure out what's right. I got to know. And for a while I was an atheist and an agnostic. And then, you know, you know, found, found like hardcore Buddhism. And then I was like, no, you everyone know has to I'm walk their own path, man. Like, everyone has to find, figure out for themselves what they believe. Right. Yeah. And you find yeah. your own Zen. And you know what? I, I the one thing that I, you, when I hear like like about about Christians and Christianity and all the evil done in the name of Christianity, I think you know I I like your Christ and not so much your Christians. Well, I think you, um, even among Christians, you can tell there are people who use it for good and people who use it for bad. There are people who use it to excuse bad behavior or rationalize it, and there are people who use it to call them to uh, a, a better way of life. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's when you can tell people who are like spiritually at peace, you know that, that that we have a Zen. You know, I think I've been kind of coming into that even at age thirty-eight, just over the last few years of my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. I definitely believe in religious freedom. I think everyone has to walk their own path, and um, I think the biggest thing about religion is that it's a discipline. You know, and it's a discipline that we seek from outside of ourselves. You know, otherwise you could like any every, everyone can obviously make up whatever they want to um, and, and, you know, go down that path. OK, cool. We don't have to get deep into this unless people out there do. But I, th I thought you brought that up. That would be good to do. OK, so we've got lots of people running um, in, on the, in the Libertarian Party. Um, I th are you guys still having your convention in May? I hope so. Okay. And so, if, if if you want a quick little backstory on mm -hmm. on my situation, mm -hmm. we were in Peoria, Illinois. I think it was ugh, three or four weeks ago. It's hard to say, right? And a lot of this this weird coronaphobia crisis. Sometimes it's like a day seems like a week. Although I think that's kind of slowed down. But mm -hmm. there was a period where 
the news was just coming so fast and everything was changing so rapidly. It was kind of overwhelming if you were trying to keep up with it. And mm -hmm. we were supposed to be in Michigan uh, for their convention in Grand Rapids mm -hmm. the next day, and Michigan canceled theirs. And then there was a wave of state convention cancellations. So they're all going remote, you know, and, and now, so we, we had to do a coronaphobia bug out tour. We went to Texas thing and maybe things will come out of lockdown. We'll hang out in Texas until their state convention. But it looks like even that is going remote. <clears throat> and then the Libertarian National Committee, who gets to decide this, is going to be having a meeting, I think, on May 2nd or 3rd. And they've put it off till then, which I think is smart to decide finally. I really hope, and I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for, excuse me, having the convention as planned in Austin and just saying that we will make accommodations for people who want to practice strict social distancing. Okay. I have a hard time thinking that even in Texas, where they came in hard police state so fast, they were mandating that you have a face covering just to go pump gas in some places in Texas. Then that, there's some places that's still in effect. I think by May 21st, we will be able to uh, to meet in Austin as planned. But the fallback is July in, uh, in Vegas to piggyback with Freedom Fest, which would also be good for a lot of reasons. We get to have more of a vibrant primary now that the Republicans and Democrats are done. And uh, I, th I think I think there would be... Uh, it, it would be good either way. I think, you know, we go ahead in May, we get our nominees sooner. They, we give, you know, I have more time if I'm the nominee than to get out and, and run a general election campaign. But if not, there's this sort of attention vacuum in politics right now. And uh, I don't know, maybe if, if the libertarians start having debates in person that turn into, you know, mud wrestling matches or something, you know, then we can we can actually get some mainstream media attention. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Um, so the reason why I'm asking that question, here's a headline. I just want to read the headline mostly here uh, because it's it's in line with what we're talking about. Uh, this is in Politico. It says, will the pandemic keep third parties off the 2020 ballot? Uh, mm -hmm. it says social distancing, making it hard to get uh, signatures, etc. goes into all that stuff. Um, so, do you find that that's a problem right now in in uh, the Libertarian Party? You guys, because of all this social distancing, like what you just said, right? It's making it, um, it's taking you guys out of the limelight. No one's thinking about the third party so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think there was a deliberate conspiracy here to disadvantage third parties. But mm -hmm. when someone went to Trump and was like, Trump, if you just abandon your principles, if, if you have any left uh, and, and declare a state of emergency, guess what? We, we, we also make it really hard for the libertarians to do anything. Right. He's, oh, oh, OK, you know, it's a little contributing factor for them. And for people who don't know what Hank is referring to here in the background is that in a lot of places, just to get on the ballot because we don't have major party status, which is one way that we're kept out. Uh, you know, we, we, we have to collect signatures in order to get on the ballot. And so they, they make it that much harder for us. For Democrats and Republicans, it's either automatic or they have an existing base. So it's, it's easy for them to collect signatures. If we have to go out and collect, you know, overall, literally hundreds of thousands of signatures, and people are unwilling to share pens. And although I did it today, you know, like today, someone said, hey, you asked me to sign a petition with a clipboard at the protest to, to uh, um, uh, what, what was uh, end, you know, end the shutdown in Arizona, um, reopen Arizona, I think was um, or open Arizona was 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 the uh, the name of the petition. And for libertarians, it, it might be really tough. But before any of this happened, I had a plan anyway to guarantee that the libertarian presidential nominee is in the debates now whether they're in the actual debate themselves on stage or the podium who knows but i guarantee that if we do this the libertarian presidential nominee will be part of the bigger debate and will be a bigger story and that's like a combination of what we did with the march on the white house with veterans for ron paul and ralph nader and jill stein going and getting arrested at the debates plus all the vehicle protests and shutdowns so what we're going to do is have the retake the debate protest, although we might have to change the theme to match coronaphobia better and call it <laughs> lock down the debates. Right. But what we're going to do is say, look, if you don't let the libertarian debate, we are going to march in formation as veterans on the debate and you are going to have to arrest us one at a time 
is we are going to block the entrances in formation. And we're going to sit in if we have to. And you are going to have to arrest a giant formation of thousands of veterans if you want the Republican and Democrat to be even able to enter the building. We're going to have vehicles come and lock that area down with vehicle protests with gridlock for blocks around. We've already got a, a dozen truckers on board who have organized protests like this before. So the message is very clear to retake the debates. If you do not allow the libertarian presidential candidate in the debates, you will not be allowed to have the Republicans and Democrats debating either. We will shut you down and we will be the story. Okay. Okay. How many um, veterans do you have on board with something like that? We already had uh, four or five hundred. It was four hundred fifty something when we did the march for veterans for Ron Paul. But of course, that was years ago. And in the Libertarian Party, we have, you know, the the general population is what nine percent veterans, and 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 we're something, or is it thirteen percent? Uh, I don't know. We'd, dude, we'd have to, we'd have to look up those. Don't numbers. you want to Google that real quick? Yeah. I think I think it's it's one of those, but I, I think it might be nine percent of the general population is veterans. In the Libertarian Party, it's it, every event. You know, you know, I ask for hands. It's like twenty to thirty percent. We are way over representing the Libertarian Party. Okay. And traveling to all the state conventions, everybody was on board and super supportive of this. So just from that, we've already got at least a few hundred. When we have the dates and the actual logistics for this, the Commission on Presidential Debates did release the dates and locations but they didn't say yet that they are excluding the dem or the, uh, the the libertarian and only including the republican and democrat usually they wait until polls come out and to to, to formally exclude us and say well you didn't get 15 percent in any national polls well oh you didn't get 20 percent. oh you didn't get 25 percent. so we have to keep mm -hmm. you out um so when we declare this I, I have no doubt you know we already have the core team of people behind this there are already hundreds of people who would do this, but I, I think we have no problem pulling it off, actually shutting down those events in that area. But I, I think we could have thousands, maybe even tens of thousands when, when we get to actually promoting these events. Okay. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.